So you have fear, the root, anxiety, worry, the fruit. Anxiety, stress, worry, fear is the root. So the Bible says we don't battle flesh or blood, but we battle spirits and, in, and principalities, which means um, we're not battling people. We're battling the spirits that drive people, um, which means that fear, things like fear and worry are actually a spiritual thing. Um, so you have fear is the root, worry is the fruit. Fear is the root, anxiety is the fruit. Fear is the root, stress is the fruit. So fear is a root, just like a plant, and it plants, it grows stress, anxiety, eating disorder, suicidal thoughts. And what I love about the gospel and, and um, is that we've been left with Jesus' name. When Jesus died, not even death could stop him. He just transferred. And so God didn't die in man form. He just transferred, took the keys, took all authority away from Satan because now he's dead. So now he can go into the dark places and now rule the dark places and over the heavenly places. So now God has authority everywhere after Jesus dies and raises from the dead on the, uh, dies on the cross and uh, is raised from the dead. He's now king of everything, um, which means the devil has no authority over us and the devil has to obey the laws that God has given him so he can only operate uh, and attack you uh, if you allow him to, he can, he does not want you to believe the authority that Jesus has given you. And that's what causes almost every issue and calamity that we are seeing, uh, with people these days is that the enemy is trying to get people to believe that he has more authority than he has when he has no authority. Um, I love this thought. Queen Elizabeth makes all of her laws in her name. She uses the authority of her name when she sets any laws in action. Well, this is encouraging to me to realize that even she serves the God that we have authority under. So we actually have more authority on this earth than Queen Elizabeth herself because the name that we are given authority to make and set in and enforce new laws on this earth, new things, change scenarios, change circumstances with our prayer and with our belief and with our words. Jesus never cast out a demon out of someone when he was, he never touched them. Never in the Bible do you see Jesus touching someone to cast a demon out. He said, go. He used his words. Queen Elizabeth uses her words to create laws and then signs and does whatever she needs to do. We have the name of Jesus, the, 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 the cross and the blood represents the power that we have. So that means we have all authority over all living and dead. We have all authority and the devil will do anything he can to get you to believe a lie or any lies to distract the Bible says that he's trying to, his one purpose is to seek, kill, and destroy. He always wants you to get off your A-game. He always wants you to get off what your focus so that you can just sit and just waste time and just as he's doing and destroying more because he wants to take, he thinks, he's trying to basically take dominion over the, back over the earth and just get what he can left. God did not... The devil doesn't exist for him to torment you. The devil exists for you to torment him. And that's the standpoint God has for us. That's not the standpoint the enemy will try to get you to believe. So, that being said, um, it, it, uh, you, have, you don't have to fear anything. You do not have to live in fear. I lived in fear, anxiety, panic, anxiety attacks. My throat would close up. I was 104 pounds. I couldn't eat. I was suicidal. Um, because it is believed in Ezekiel that Lucifer, who is now Satan, was the worship leader for God. So if you're the worship leader for God, you're probably pretty creative, if not one of the most creative uh, beings in existence. So him being a creative and then falling, um, being kicked out of heaven, he's a creative. So he understands that humans are 
highly functioning creatives. Lucifer, worship leader, ex-worship leader, highly functioning creative. Creatives understand how to talk to other creatives. If you're the worship leader for God, you probably understand how creative minds works. So that's why I believe that God, that, or that's why I believe that the enemy attacks more creative people, the higher, the more creative people are and the more they are in touch with their emotions and feelings, the more they are thinkers, um, the, the, you know, we have the painters, the artists, the thinkers, the, the philosophers, the speakers, the, the musicians, the, the athletes. Um, we are very creative beings and I believe that why more, the more creative people are, the more they seem to get attacked, the people that don't understand their authority, those people seem to get attacked more, we find, and what I've found over my time, uh, over just my time just understanding these things, uh, as I had been processed and having to learn uh, how to get over and how to allow God to heal me of these things over the last five years. And so if the devil is a highly functioning creative, he knows how to get into creatives' heads. He knows that if he can stop you here first, then you can't do anything with this. Then you can't do anything with this. Then you can't do anything with this if he could stop you here. and can't. If he could stop you from being able to wake up in the morning, if he can stop you from being able to be motivated to get up and do what you love to do, if he can stop you from... From If he can keep you in such anxiety, you have to be on your couch or in your bed just struggling to breathe... That it, because of the lies, the false prisons that we create, that we allow him to create, then he can stop you. If he can stop you here, then he can stop you here. And uh, I really feel like I just want to share, and I'm actually even writing a book on it. Um, I'm writing a 30-day devotional on it from uh, what God's been revealing to me through my healing, to share my healing, and also uh, through the letters of Paul. A lot of this stuff has been coming to me, this revelation has been coming to me from reading the New Testament and reading Paul's letters to the church. Um, but, um, yeah, so what I'm saying is that the enemy is a creative, high-functioning creative. He understands how creative minds work. So if you can look at the big picture and realize, oh my gosh, if this word is true, if this Bible is true, if all things work in my favor, the Bible says all things work in, in favor of those who are called to his purpose. Basically, it's saying all things are work in favor to those who are called, to those who love Jesus. Um, no bad things can happen to you. And if something isn't good yet, that means it's not finished. And um, I mean, I have numerous times have had this approach to things that circumstances that not, did not seem good in my favor. And I'm like, no, it's just going to be better. There's a delay here. Nope, that's just because it's going to be better. It ends up being better. Um, so it, the, the, what, I, what I feel like the Lord wants to tell people is in this day and age is to not worry, is to really find your foundation on what the Bible says. Have the mind of Christ. Be of one mind. The church needs to function properly. It needs to have one mind. There needs to be unity. Well, if we're a mirror reflection of the church, that means we are, we need to operate in one mind that, to, in order to function properly. Uh, we can't have separate mindsets. We can't have, you know, mind of stress, the mind of worry, and the mind of Christ. We just need one mind. So, um, yeah, so that's, I just, in this day and age with all the corona stuff, the fears, I know that everyone watching this, you guys are not, uh, you guys aren't the people who are buying into this, but you know, you go to the store and now you're like, shoot, I just want to wipe my butt. I just want toilet paper. And now there's toilet paper because all of these fear driven people. So what I really want is us to just begin to pray and use that authority. Jesus died on the cross. Everything with Jesus is about power, power and love. Jesus dying on the cross and being raised from the dead, that's power. That's supernatural power. God has given us supernatural power to change this earth and show his love and grace and mercy to all people just as we have been received. And so if Jesus, if there's no power, it's time for Christians to raise up, to rise up and understand and operate in the power that Jesus gave them. Because if they're not, then Jesus dying on the cross and being raised from the dead is all for nothing.